Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Today I want to read from Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. And it reads, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And I just wanted to encourage us on tonight. Minister Hearn has been talking to us about renewing our minds, about spending time with God, about getting silence. And I know sometimes that may seem hard, but with God, all things are possible. What she is saying is doable. And it will strengthen us if we would take heed and we would listen. It will strengthen our lives. It will strengthen our walks. And it will bless us. So I want you guys to be encouraged and to know that all things, everything she's saying is possible with God. This is good knowledge, good understanding. Now it's time for us to apply wisdom with God. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you. You are holy and righteous. And we thank you that you allow us, O King, to be in your presence, O God. I pray, Father God, on tonight, as you're here with us, O God, that Minister Hearn, as she brings forth her word, O Lord, that we would listen get knowledge and understanding, and then apply wisdom, O God, to our lives, O King, with you, knowing that all things are possible with you. I pray that we would take this food that she's given to our souls, O King, and it will become reality for us. I pray that we don't show up another Thursday and just say that was a good message or that was a good lesson, but we will take it and apply it to our lives, O God, so that we can see the fruit and the results of what she's teaching. Father God, I pray you will be with her on today as she speaks. Fill her with your spirit of fresh, O King. Allow her words to be yours, O King. And bless her, O God, in her own life, O God, as she not only teaches the word but lives it before us, O Lord, as an example. King, I pray you will be with her, O God. You will continue to strengthen her, O King, and allow her to stand in this position, O God. May you be with us, O King, as we listen. May we take it, O Lord, and apply it. And may you be satisfied, O God, with our lives, O King. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. removed from both of his eyes. And in this passage of scripture tonight, we're going to look in um, Luke 24, and we're going to see people who were spiritually blinded until the Lord opened their eyes. Amen? Amen. Uh, let me preface also by saying that you will see this again on Sunday, and there's an announcement in the back. If you want to get ahead of me, we're going to begin a study in the book of Daniel starting next week. It's such a delicious book. I mean, that's soul food for real. And uh, we, we, when we were women <coughs> at Ebal, I uh, started that. How many of y'all remember Daniel when we went through it? Okay, that's all right. That's good. That means it'll be fresh. It'll be right fresh, too. Um, so we're going to start, we're gonna start um, the book of Daniel beginning next week. And I'm going to do a 13-week study on that, if the Lord allows. Um, but... If you want to get ahead of me, you want to have some good knowledge and information, you want to bring some thoughts to the class where the other people can grow, it's such a meaty book filled with prophetic knowledge. It's a book filled with what's happening today. You would be surprised how much 2024 shows us up in a book that was written, I don't even know how many years ago, but a good many. And we get to see the hand of the Lord as he's moving and things are evolving and developing. 
those things. Like we're uh, filmed in a dark room, we can just see the word bring those things to life. Amen? Amen. 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 So tonight, if you would find yourself in the book of Luke, chapter 24, I am of the mindset that we had Easter, and a lot of times, like I said, we wore our garlands and our nice dresses, and we love to go to church for Easter, and then after the Easter resurrection sermon, people go back to their life. It is our life. If there had been no resurrection, there would be no church. Amen? Amen. So we know that it is so important for the resurrection. So I want to keep that in the forefront of our mind. I would love to complete this study. But again, if I do not complete it, you're welcome to have it. If you would, uh, drop me your email on a piece of paper. Sister uh, Nina will pass that around later. And we'll get everybody's email. I'll be glad to send you the PowerPoint presentation of the Bible study if you want to go back and review it on your own. Amen. Amen. So, open in our eyes. I say the cross without the resurrection is meaningless, as I just said, and the resurrection without the cross is powerless. You have to have that. You have to have the cross. It is our legacy. It is the, the meat on the bones for our salvation. In Luke chapter 24, we're going to see where Jesus' disciples don't recognize him. And they don't recognize him until he literally opens their eyes because he's risen from the dead. He cannot grant sight to anybody in him who is spiritually blind. <coughs> Did you hear what I said? Yes. It is sometimes, and I know it's true, there are some things in our life that we don't look because we don't want to see. Man. Mm -hmm. You can have a relationship in your life that's failing and you don't look at it because you don't want to see it. Some people don't check their balance on their bank account because they don't want to see it. There are some things that I think you think if I don't look at it, it doesn't exist. And some people live in this bubble of if I don't see it, well, you know, out of sight, out of mind. It's the concept, right? Yes. But what we're going to see is that when your eyes are spiritually dark, it brings, thank you so much. We got, we need another one up here. One more. <coughs> one more. Amen. When your eyes are darkened, you can't see spiritually. So we're going to see as Jesus opens their eyes. We find ourselves at an empty tomb. I think that's where we left off. And we get to this empty tomb. What the Lord showed me is just so incredible. So let's look at the story. Luke chapter 24. Verse 1. <coughs> now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came upon the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord. Found not the body of the Lord. And it came to pass that they were much perplexed why they were much perplexed, but they were. There about, behold, two men stood in shining garments, and as they were afraid, they bowed down their faces to the earth, and they said unto them, he said, why are you seeking the living among the dead? He's not here, but is risen. Remember, somebody say remember. Remember. How he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. It says, and they remember his words. Y'all see that? Yes. Now, if you go back and look at the account in Luke chapter 18, which is, which is some days before this actual account, it says, Luke 18, 31, 34 says, this is Jesus, and we're going to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. Who are we? The Gentiles. Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, spit on him. They will flog him for young people means that this means they're going to beat him real bad. And kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. This is foretold in Luke chapter 18 mm -hmm. as it appears in Luke chapter 24. I wanted to also show you these accounts in other gospels as we started this study by my doing. Matthew chapter 28. The women go to the well, they go to, I'm sorry, the grave, and they see that the tomb is empty, that Mary Magdalene and her companions. Now, I told you guys on last week 
that Jesus had 70 other disciples than the ones that we commonly name. Right? Yes. We commonly mm -hmm. name the 12, but we rarely talk about the 70 and us now, the disciples mm -hmm. today. Um, but they came to the tomb, Mary and a few other mother disciples. That's in Matthew. And Jesus appeared to the women in Matthew. He doesn't appear to the women here in the book of Luke. <coughs> When we look at them going to the well, remember I said that they went down, verse, what is that? Verse 1. Mm -hmm. says they prepared spices. Now hear me say this clearly. This hit me in my gut when the Lord showed it to me. Now the main reason that they prepared spices for the dead is so they could control the smell of decomposition. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The Jews didn't practice embalming. They, they right. used spices as a way to minimize the unpleasant smell. And I gave you the example from Lazarus when Jesus went to raise him from the dead. She said, by now, it, he said it's fit. Because it had been four days, and a body's decomposition is pretty rapid. So she knew once you roll that stone away, that smell of death is going to come out. <coughs> so the face. spices that the women brought to the tomb was intimidate, intended to eliminate the odor of the dead. Who's with me before I even get there? Amen. Amen. Now they brought spices to a dead body. But we just read in Luke chapter 18 what? He said that I will be killed. I'm getting up. I'm not going to be there. Yes. But they brought spices. Come on, somebody. Everybody, everybody called it. Mm -hmm. The fact that the woman brought the spices uh -huh, to a dead body shows me that they did not expect Jesus to have literally risen from the dead. Mm -hmm. But if they, they came to make a fragrant body. Mm -hmm. The women travel this weekend early on the Sunday morning, and their plans were to do as they had always done to every other dead body. Mm -hmm. Let's make it presentable and smell for the dead body that still remains. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Who's with me? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but if you read the story, when he talked about dying and resurrection, the women wasn't there. He was talking to the girls, 12 disciples. So the women didn't know until they got to the tomb and talked to the angels and found out what had happened. They didn't know. The women didn't know. They didn't know that Jesus was going to rise? No. No, they didn't. If you read the story, they wasn't present when Jesus. He was. They wasn't present when he talked about his resurrection. <coughs> but his twelve disciples was. They just didn't tell nobody. Mm -hmm. no. That's what I'm saying. Miscommunication. Okay. Go ahead. I'm a sorry. question. I just had to get that out because that was like getting my last. A, a question. Uh -huh. we'll, um, we'll, we'll come back to it. Go ahead. Um, if you read that that text. It said that Jesus told them a whole lot of things, but he also just didn't tell the disciples only. He yeah. told crowds of people yeah. that what was going to befall him. And and, and uh, the angels wouldn't have said that to them, that don't you remember what he said, yeah. if, if, if they hadn't heard it. Amen. Let's, let's move on. We'll come back. We'll come back to it. That's a good conversation. No, right? Now, what do we make of this question that they're asking, that the angel asked? He asked them the question, why seek ye the living among the dead? And I was so impacted to her this the week. Jesus never really answered a question straight out. You asked him a question, and he would just you a question. Mm -hmm. I tried that. It doesn't work for me so well. If I ask people a question, people ask you a question with a question because they want you to further dialogue with them. Mm -hmm. They want to see what you know. And I believe that's what Jesus was doing. He, he responded by throwing questions right back to them. And I don't believe it was meant to frustrate them. It was more of an opportunity for them to rethink, regroup. What, what is it that you're thinking about? And sometimes, it's like, sometimes Andrea gets up to encourage us, and she says, we need to. And the, if I say, what would happen if? That makes you look at it differently. What would happen if you took the word and you went out and lived it? Now, that's different than mm -hmm. you need to do it. Mm -hmm. Because it puts it back in your corner to say, you know what? I think we need this. That's good. That's right. So he was asking them a question so that they would re 
think about what had been previously said. Mm -hmm. So these angels question invites these women to understand that by raising Jesus from the dead, God has announced that Jesus really is the true king because if they didn't know that Jesus was going to rise from the dead, it wouldn't mean so much to them. That's right. Amen? Mm -hmm. Right. But in our doubt and unbelief, and we're going to talk about that a little bit too, we sometimes could know a thing about Jesus. You can find yourself in this passage. You can know a thing about Jesus and still believe something. Totally <coughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. So we must be mindful to always remember God's word. So I'm going to park here before I go into more into the lesson. What is it that God told you last? I don't want you to say it out loud. I want you to think about it. It's more of a rhetorical question. I want you to think about the thing that God's word has said to you. Maybe your Christian experience doesn't really allude to that. Maybe you're walking with the Lord and you still feel like you did last month. You don't really see a change. But there's something that the Lord keeps telling you. something in you that makes you keep going when you want to quit. There's something in you that says, I don't know about everything, but the little that I do know, I think I want to, I want more of that, maybe. You don't really know, but you know that there's something more that you want. What is it that God is asking you, his child, to remember tonight? Because there's so many things, it's like this lesson and the one before and after, there's no way you could remember what every lesson we've had since the beginning of 2024. But what is it that the Father is asking you personally to remember? Mm -hmm. Write that down if you're taking notes. Because maybe he told you and you forgot, and he's trying to get you to remember again like he's doing these ladies. It was powerful information that he had raised from the dead. It was powerful, like Pastor Welch had said, that they needed to remember these things. But in that moment, in the middle of grief and turmoil and life and problems and stress and money issues and all the things, sometimes we don't quite remember. That's right. That's true. He's asking us. So I don't know what it is you're writing down. But I want you to just not write it down for the sake of being in class tonight. I want you to go back and really ask the Holy Spirit what he will do. Help me remember. Amen. Amen. Let's move on. This is a good lesson. <laughs> Let me go back. I didn't get excited. All right. He asked them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. Remember, he spoke to you when he was in Galilee. That's what he had told us. <laughs> Say, he told them three things. He said, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And then they remembered. Verse 9. And they returned from the sepulcher and told all these things up to the eleven and to all the rest. Now they're taking back the message that they received from the angel back to the eleven men. But look at what these men did. It was Mary Magdalene, it tells us, and Joanna. And Mary, the mother of James, and other women, and that word hyphen in my Bible, women were telling the story that were with them and told the apostles, and you have to understand that women was not readily expected. We were, and still to this day, it's true in some of these places, not all, but many of these places still view women as property in the same way you would a cow or a, a duck or a goat or a chicken. They, they're not reserved as human life. They're reserved as the carrier, the barrier, the children, and, and many other things, but not to be respected or to be revered. So when they came and they told them, although they followed Jesus, although they were part of the group, they still wasn't to be believed by these group of men who they were speaking to. Verse 11. And their words seemed to them as idle tales. Why are you telling us these tales? Y'all done pulled out some folklore from somewhere. <laughs> and they believed them not. Why did they not believe them? Because they were spiritually blind. That's what I want you to see. They could not see. Even had Mary and Martha had a tablet and they wrote it out and they spelled it out and they were very animated. They were not going to be able to see that. 12 says, then arose Peter and ran into the sepulcher. And stooping down, he beheld the linen cloth laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at which was come to pass. How many of you in this room tonight can't believe God until you see some results? Don't answer. Now, I, I, I can be with you. You say I'm going to be healed. You say 
day, my marriage is going to be well. You say I'm going to have this money, but it ain't in my hand. My husband's still acting a fool. My wife's still acting crazy. My money's still acting funny. Now, when it gets right, then I can believe you. But right now, y'all keep talking about having faith. Y'all keep talking about praying. Y'all keep talking about reading the word. But Sister Hernan, I done tried all that. I done read the word. I couldn't understand it. I can, if you don't explain it to me, I don't know what I'm reading. I have tried to pray. I get so bored or I get sleepy and I stay down there for as long as I can. And I got to get up. My back start hurting. My knees start hurting. My neck start hurting. And it ain't nothing else to say. I said all the words in the English language that I know and added it. <coughs> and so the Lord was telling me on last week the reason that people don't stay and read the word of God is because they try to do it in their own strength and their own ability. Yes. And every time that you come to this word, the conversation I've been having with a sister week after week after week, and the revelation that comes, I, I, I kid you not, y'all see this Bible, right? All you see is what? Words. Black and white. Mm-hmm. But that's not what they are. It's yeah. life. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a person being in the hospital and they put a machine on them. Mm-hmm. This is what this is, that they're life-giving. They literally come off this page and get inside your heart. But there's a way to do that. It's just not, not five reading, getting your journal, getting a pen and a paper, <coughs> trying to scratch your head. It's not how it's done. It will never get in. It will go on, but it will never get in that way. Mm-hmm. Okay? The only way that you can read and understand the Word of God is, one, you have to be hungry for it. And my prayer for you on a daily basis, the body of Christ and New Start specifically, is that we would get hungry for the Word of God. That we would not, we could not wait. Oh, oh what time? I'm not going to get there at 7. I can get there at 6.30. i got to get this Word that our hunger, our bellies would be so empty and we would want to be filled. And we would come in mm, so full when we come in that we couldn't even get to our seat good. We're not talking about how good the food is and what you did this week. We're so full of the word that when I encounter Mona, Mona's giving me words. Mm-hmm. I don't get none of Mona. I don't get none of uh, Pastor. I don't get none of Max. I don't get none of Scott. When I go to them, you can tell how a person spends their time based on their conversation. And when you talk to somebody and the word keeps vomiting out of their mouth, you either going to be like, okay, I'm going to talk to them, but I'm going to talk about something else. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you, put it in the potatoes. If that's not where you are and you're not ready to just it, I can tell. Cause <laughs> I'm going to talk for Pastor Seth. But if you sit down with me for a while, at some point we're going to the word. That's right. We're going there. At some point, that's where this conversation is going to go. I may sit back and quiet, but I got in my mind, I want to know what you know about the scripture because I don't have it all. Yes? Yes. But God may be revealing something to Elizabeth that he hadn't showed me yet. And when I talk to her, the truth inside of her, it's like the baby in Elizabeth's belly, literally. Wow. (laughs) Just because Jesus had encountered him in Mary's belly. That's what it should be like when we come together. There should be our spirit. There should be a jump in our spirit. Something, the life on the inside of me is resonating with the life on the inside of you. When we get together, there is a great conversation. Amen? Amen. So he said, the word seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then the rose Peter and ran to the sepulchre, took him down. He beheld the linen cloth, laid by himself. He wandered at what had come to pass. Did somebody steal him? Did he rise up? What happened to Jesus? Where is he at? Now, if you look at this in the way that I see it in my mind, God, that this isn't Jesus of the Bible to him. This isn't Jesus of the scripture to him. This is his friend. Mm-hmm. Think about somebody that you love that passed away. That's how he saw them. It wasn't Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of, it's like uh, you watch famous people pass away on the screen, Whitney Houston and some of these, and the world knew them as Whitney Houston, but the daughter and the children and the aunts and the uncles knew them. And that's how I believe he was still with me. I knew him. He wasn't the, the, the savior the, uh, to the world. He was my savior. He was my teacher. He was my friend. He labeled me. We ate together. We talked in the middle of the night. We had to stoke the fire. The things that don't make the Bible were natural things that happened in the human experience that Jesus had with these disciples. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So when you spend just having a family, like you're here, you and your daughter and y'all go home, it's a different view that she gets. Right? Because you get comfortable. And I believe that's how Jesus was. Still not so comfortable with them that they did not recognize that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 13 says, and behold, two of them, the same day, to a village called Emmaus, 
which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talk together. These are two men. They don't tell us their names right away, but they're going to tell us the name of one of them. All of these things which had happened, and it came to pass that while they were communed together, and reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. 16, what does it say? But, but, their yeah. eyes but they kept from closed. recognizing him. Oh, their eyes were closed. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this, is, this is the problem that I have in our worship experience. There are many times that the Holy Spirit comes in the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are many times that emotions fill the room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. 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 There are many times that the service is not filled with the Holy Spirit, and I have learned from being in, in, in the body of Christ, I'm saying the church because I am it, but I've been in the body of Christ for years, and I have seen where emotionalism takes the service and propels it into another emotional realm. Mm -hmm. People are so interested in feeling something that they care not if Jesus doesn't come mm -hmm. They care not if the Holy Spirit doesn't come in mm -hmm. because they have their agenda. We're going to have this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and she's going to sing, and she's a really good singer. Oh, and I just cry every time she sings. Not the Holy Spirit, but music has power. Mm -hmm. Music, yeah. oh, yes. music has power. This is something that the Lord was telling me the other day. Have you ever listened to a song's lyrics? How many of you pay attention yeah. to the lyrics? How many of yeah. you listen to the beat? Yeah. No, I don't believe it. Yeah. And so what the Lord told me, I just showed you guys that these are words, right? Mm -hmm. So there are many, there are many, there are many, there are many artists right now mm -hmm. who write songs under demonic influence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. They yeah. write songs, and if you listen to some of the lyrics, especially some of this that's coming out now, yeah. they, they're got, they've gotten so bold to even denounce God in the lyrics. Mm -hmm. They've gotten so bold. It's not even about sexual content like it used to be. Mm -hmm. right. Now they're talking about God yep. and the God. There's mm -hmm. a new movie out called Clarence, yes. and it is so anti-God. They said that they got in a room and they wrote the movie yeah. and they heard voices and when they heard voices it helped them write the movie all the way through there is demonic forces in the music through the words because every song has words and that's why it matters what we sing in worship yes. it matters what we pray mm -hmm. it matters what we read because the bible says that words have power right. but words have power to influence a people the songs in, in some of the songs you might even love but if you listen to the lyrics by Boosie and some of these artists if you really take time to listen to them you're thinking they're actually talking about suicide death, yeah. mm -hmm. killing all the things that the enemy loves because he is the God of this world. Amen. He has access to it. He's supposed to do what he do in this realm. And he is passing out cash bags. You know me, I, I'm, I'm all in my bag is what the young people say. I'm trying to get in my bag. I'm all in my bag. Whatever it is, the bag is somewhere. <laughs> and what they're saying is they're trying to make so much money. Just make money and yeah. make money and make money and make money. And the enemy is allowing them to make it. He's allowing them to catch every dollar that falls. So you got me and Pastor was talking about this. You get a camera and a microphone. You put a video up. You got people called influencers. And they spend hours mm -hmm. in editing. Mm -hmm. So that they can get paid for the content that they create to put out into the world. So the enemy starts giving them ideas. So while you're creating content and while you're getting dollars from the world, you're getting further away from a God who loves you. That's, right. and that's why I got a problem. I love that we have the camera where the word can go out. But I always ask the question, Malia, why is it here? I watched the service. Hallelujah. I watched the service online, and the camera was all up in the lady's face, and she was getting delivered. And it, for them, it was a, a reel. It was a highlight. It was a moment. They put music behind it, an animation, and people were watching these people yep. get delivered. I came up in a time where it wasn't no such a thing. That's right. You were on the altar, slaughtering the line, you know, crawling, whatever you had to do because you really wanted Jesus. There wasn't nobody to catch your hands lifted. Mm -hmm. But we're in a society where everybody want to see, everybody want to name, everybody mm -hmm. want to like. And I told Pastor Hearn, every like you get is like a form of worship. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the camera don't do what it's supposed to do. But you always have to look at the heart of the thing. Yes. He says that men look at the outward appearance. They look at, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, 25 people watch. What is that, 2,000 people? Oh, mm -hmm. there are a lot of viewers today. Why do we want them to watch? Are we after souls or are we after life? Come on. Yes. Yeah. Come on. And that's the that's question right. that Daddy poses to me. 
That's right. right. So he said that their eyes were blinded. And so many people in this world, these artists that are creating this music, they have no idea. They're in a trance. I watched mm -hmm. a video the other day about a guy who said he smokes weed. And he said, every time I smoke weed, I know I'm under a trance and I can feel it. He said, because when I open the weed, my eyes be open, man, when I'm high. But he said, this day my eyes was open and I saw some things I don't think I was supposed to see. Mm -hmm. He said, I was dancing and couldn't stop dancing. It was uncontrollable for me. He said, every time you get high, what do they call liquor? Cheers. Say it again. Cheers. And why do you think they call it that? Because you come out of whomever you are. Some people feel like they need it. I need this liquid courage because, you know, I'm not good in public. I'm not good in settings. I get so nervous. And it just calms me down. And the enemy sells you so many lies to smoke or to drink or to do the things because he knows that he puts handcuffs on you that come you on. can't get out of. Right, come on now. Sin has a way of taking you farther than you wanted to go and keeping you longer. What? 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 what, what that you wanted to stay. Mm -hmm. And then when addiction and you're bound by it and you don't know how to get free and you don't tell this, it's not something we tell in the church. Mm -hmm. We present our best self in the church, Debbie. Mm -hmm. We show ourselves with our best clothes on, best makeup, best hair. We're good. We look good and I feel good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you know you told us. You know you're bound by addiction. Yes. You're bound by relationship. Mm -hmm. You know you want somebody, you can't get somebody, and so you feel less than, and all these things go through your mind. You come to church, you feel good, you go out, you feel depressed and suicidal, and the enemy keeps you in this cycle where you feel like you can't get free, and the church folks is doing the same thing. You don't know who's really going through and who's being their authentic self. Mm -hmm. All you know is that you ain't going to tell nobody because ain't nobody else telling, mm -hmm. and so I'll just suffer inside. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot for me. My God. Mm -hmm. It's a lot for the enemy. But once your eyes get open, once your eyes get open, you don't care who sees. That's right. If, Come on now. If, if your heart stopped in this room tonight, and the ambulance came right now, would nobody would nobody get undignified? We keep our buttons up and our zippers up, and we'd be fine. But if your heart stopped tonight, and the ambulance had to come in here to resuscitate you, you could care less yourself. That's right. That's right. All you saying is save my life. That's right. And that's how we have to be. We have to be open. And I know we got to do that better as the body of Christ. We got to do better as the body of Christ. That's the one thing I can say about NA or, or, or AA or any of those groups is there is a transparency in those groups. I had to go doing my courses in college to some of those groups. And they have, it's almost like church in a sense. I mean, they have speakers, they have offerings. They have people giving testimonies. Mm -hmm. It's a whole service, really. Mm -hmm. The difference is they use profanity, and the people in the church would use it. They would use it too, amen. They tell it. <laughs> <laughs> I just call profanity. it hamburger. But it's such a rawness and a realness that you can't negate. You mm -hmm. cannot negate that these people are giving you their best. And what I like about them is they understand we all like this. <laughs> I ain't got put on for you, you ain't got put on for me, and I was drinking high that time and I made it through. It was like, oh, that's good you made it through, because I was there a couple of days ago. Right. And we were like that as the body of Christ, where right. people would get help. But we got too many people trying to be way up high in the sky and the mm -hmm. I'm super saved. I'm not just saved. Mm -mm. I'm super saved. If all of you peasants would come up here with me, then it would be better. We got people who live their Christian experience like that. Yes. They feel like if they got a prayer life and they understand the scripture that they got some type of a uh, license on God where he don't move, some type of chokehold on God, and you just need to do what I'm doing and your life will be better. But God don't do it. Everybody the same way. There's nobody in this room, even if you're related, that look exactly the same. Amen. You can tell me that God can make fingerprints on hands, all ten of mine, mm. and all ten of my toes, and all ten of y'all's, and all over the world be it's totally different, mm. and your Christian experience is not going to be different than mine. Everybody's experience is different because mm -hmm. everybody Amen. receives different and really you don't know where people come from. Yes. Why do you think people should be over and under it and, and just past it? That is the word of God. But even God takes time for us to leave that junk behind mm -hmm. yes, so that we can follow him. Amen. He's very patient and very loving with us. <laughs> and even the best of the best Christian you have days where you might not say it out loud, but you think it. That's and right. you find yourself in your prayer closet going, Lord, here I am again. I didn't say nothing, but I wanted to. Can you, know, you say that? Works on us and he purifies us. Yeah. Could you say that again? Which part? What I'm you just know. said of I'm a Christian and I wanted to say this. But I didn't. But I didn't. I had to go into my prayer closet. I had to go into my prayer closet and ask God to purify me. 
purify my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I say this to you guys more mm -hmm. often than not. Mm -hmm. When you go into prayer, the Father is after the things that you're trying to cover up. Mm -hmm. I get so sick of myself. I get sick of myself, Mona, in prayer. And this That's week, good. the Lord has really been on me. He has been on me this week. I'm talking to him, and I'm like, oh, God, this is wonderful. He said, shut up. Oh. Anyway, huh? I want you. And you've been doing this so long, you don't even know who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to talk to me. You're not going to change. I'm not going to change the way I talk to Elizabeth and then change the way I talk to Patricia and then be two different people. I'm going to be the same. Mm -hmm. But somehow we get before God and we think we have to clean it up and have perfect posture. And oh Lord. And, and it, or we just so broken we don't, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want any of that. I say... Well, God told me one day, I think we're going to get to heaven. We're going to find out all the things that we try to give God and never ask him for. Amen. Never ask him to do that. Amen. I never ask you. The things I ask you to do, love, forgive, be kind, give to the poor, there, there are things to cool define. But you try to give me some other religious stuff that I never asked you for. Uh -huh. I never said that you do this and this helps you get closer to me. I never told you that. I don't know who told you that, but it's your responsibility to undo the lies and the damage. I can't yes. be blaming on Pastor so and so from over there. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, I'm taking authority over my life, and I'm gonna find out what the truth is for my life, so I can get right and get some help. Amen. Because the sad thing is, I'm 50. I'm not saying that. And for the years that I've been living, most of them I fit in God. I talk about the time I was. Now I'm not talking about that. But for the time that I was in God, I came into a church that was very religious. Yeah. I bought it, I bought the Kool-Aid, I gave change, I bought some more. And so I came away from that thinking that everybody had to be like me if they wanted to be saved. Mm -hmm. I came up in apostolic Pentecostal. <clears throat> so if you had on what I got on tonight, leggings or earrings or a necklace or fingernail polish or you any of that, lipstick, eyelash, any of that, honey, you were, you were definitely going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, but it, it, in the day that I grew up in apostolic Pentecostal, the philosophy, the mindset was the poorer you were, the closer you were with God. You were humble if you didn't have a lot. If you were, you know, just lived meekly. You barely had a cup of water. You could wear this crazy doctor. Go take care. We didn't go to the doctor. Not yet, like, but. You know, even though God gave me a knowledge. God will heal us. So I had people in my That's family and people in the church down of cancer and lupus and things that they could have been cured of. Wouldn't take any medicine. I'm not, I'm not advocating for any of those things. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you that you get in a religious mindset mm -hmm. yeah. and you don't mm -hmm. ask God any different and so you go years and years and years and years in the wrong mindset. You have to make the decision. It stops with me. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then, Amen. 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 Not my lesson, but that was. That was <laughs> All right, so they're going down this road. They, 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 they're reasoning with Jesus. They're, they, they, he says that their eyes were closed. He had, he had shut their eyes. They couldn't see. And he said to them, uh, two men. I get ahead of myself. They know I get excited. Somebody say, come on, man. Come on, man. So these two men are walking seven miles. And initially, if you look at seven miles, you think, that ain't nothing. Uh, go out here and walk seven miles tomorrow. And come back and tell me. It ain't nothing. You won't come back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so today's term, seven, seven, seven miles equates to two hours. Yeah. Hour. They're going to a man. It doesn't tell us why they're going to a man. There's no other... 
thing I can pull from water <laughs> onto a man, but I know that this is the weekend of Jesus' death, and they walk in and they upset about it. Jesus died, they don't know where it met. And I, I believe, just me personally, because it's that other wisdom, that these were of the 70 disciples that were with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about the death of Jesus, and it just happened the weekend, and it names one of them for us, and gives us the name of Cleopas. That's the only name it gives us. It's the other one, I'll be known who he is, but Cleopas named him for sure. that. And they had heard Jesus preached in the same way that uh, Pastor Wolf was talking about. They heard that Jesus walked with them and Jesus did miracles. We went back to Luke 18 where he showed them, oh, this is going to happen to me on this day. I'm going like, to go down. They're going to take me. I'm going to die. And then I gave you other accounts from Matthew and Mark and up until Luke. So we knew that there were many accounts from many different viewpoints that the people knew that Jesus said, I'm going to go. I'm going to die. I came here to die. In Matthew it says. And although they had heard the word of the Lord preached over and over and over and over, they found themselves walking down this road, still mm -hmm. discouraged, still doubtful, mm -hmm. still in despair. They were walking around in despair as ones that had no hope. Mm -hmm. And so I asked myself the question, how many times mm -hmm. did we come in here, Malik, mm -hmm. and we hear the word, it'd be powerful, it's like, who has to preach over you? Mm -hmm. I just go to Yeshua back in the day. Be good for you. You'd be like, oh, that's so good. Oh, Sister Hunter, that was so good. But then you still face the same level of discouragement, the same level of doubt, the same level of despair as if you have no hope and you don't know that we serve a risen Savior. Amen. I have a problem with our up and downness. Yes. Why is it? Why? 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 is it that Christ has to prove himself to us so many times. I don't know if any other person that I am in relationship with that I would have to keep proving, I can make the cheesecake. Can you? Can you make it? Can you? She said to her, please, I really want you to make it. Can you make it? I can make it. I got you. I'll do it. But can you please will you make it? I got the cheese and the butter and the stuff in my hand. I'm headed to the kitchen and you're begging me to do something I told you I would do. And this is what we do to our Lord. He heals our family member. He heals our body. Come on. And, and we good. That's on Monday. Thursday, something else. Come on. Maybe the tar, yeah. right on the cough. Oh, Lord. And we say, oh, Lord, where are you? I just showed up on Monday. Where do you think I went from Monday to Thursday? He's not a God that has to speak and prove anything to us. That's right. He doesn't have to speak Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. He can speak on Monday. He could have spoke Monday in 2022, and maybe you haven't done that yet. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. that, that right there. Maybe mm -hmm. the thing that he told you yeah. to do Lord, years yeah. ago, you done put something else on it because you think mm -hmm. that he's a genie in the bottle. You think he's the type of guy that you can create a laundry list for and say, God, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, and I'm going to do that till you do this. And Lord, I fast if you do this. Lord, I pray if you do this. And we pray, we end our prayers, and God will be careful to give you the glory. No, we ain't going back. Give God no glory. It has become rhetoric and the way we pray. If you're going to give God the glory, give it to him now. Amen. That's right. <laughs> so we make this run with the Lord. If you do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. But I'm definitely getting this. I'm definitely getting a kid. I'm definitely getting a house. I'm definitely getting a car. I'm definitely getting those things from you, oh God, if you it's your will. But we've already made up in our mind to get it. We've already signed the dotted line to go in debt to get it. And then pray after the fact, Lord, is it be you? Come on. It's too late then. And then wonder why we have a hard time paying the payment to keep it up because Come on, we're not here. We're not here. Not here. Not we didn't uh, seek his uh, advice for us. Mm -hmm. And so we ask God, look, Lord, um, if you would bless, you don't have to ask God if he would bless you. You don't have to beg God. That breaks my heart, Elizabeth, when I hear people bragging, begging, begging God to do something he said he would do. Lay it at the altar and pray about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we come in, we go out, still discouraged, still doubtful, still don't know if God will do it, don't know if he will do it, if he want to do it. Is it, is, it, is it God's will if you get sick to heal you? Yes. yes. Now I want to hear it. Yes. yes. You say yes. I say yes. So why do we pray to be your will? Because the situation starts looking worse. This works is looking worse. We go in the hospital, we pray for these folks, and, and clearly death is all over them. Mm -hmm. and we go in to give some type of sympathetic prayer, and we end up with God to be your will. You know the end from the beginning. Either you're going to have faith or not. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to stand on his word or not. I, I know for sure. I know this for sure. I don't know nothing else. If a person is in Christ Jesus, and they leave this life, they're much better off than Praise God. the Lord. Mm -hmm. They may not 
know that yet. They may be thinking of all the things they have to leave behind. But once they get over there, I don't want to come back. I ain't coming back. Come back. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had looked at, I've watched several videos where I looked at people going to hell because that interests me. That interests me that people go to hell every day. It interests me because we the church, we sit there and we get fat and we sit back and we belt and, oh, that was good. Give me some more. What else you got? That was so good. We get full. The church gets full off the word of God. And we don't go out and do anything with it. Meanwhile, there's somebody right now at 745 who is opening up their eyes in hell. Trying to say, oh my God, oh wow, I thought I was gangbanging, I thought I was something, this is hell, I don't want to be here. And they know that I'm here and I can't get out. That's right. They know that. Mm -hmm. And so, 745, babies are opening up their eyes in heaven. Babies who we watch on the news, it's 10 o'clock, this child was abducted on the left or whatever. That child passed away, they went straight to heaven. And they way better off than we are here. It doesn't make it right. And the Bible says, at the beginning, when they got the knowledge of good and evil, all those things and more are going to come from that tree. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Right, amen. So, thank you, Lord. Let me get back. Let me get back. <coughs> How do we protect ourselves from doubt? The best way, I say it every week, but the best way for you and I to protect ourselves from doubt, it is not fantastical. It is not elaborate. I'm not going to say something different. That it's not going to be a one-two punch and then you're there. The only way to do it is to read the word. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all I have to offer you. The Apostle Paul said, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So if a person's eyes are not open and they can't see, and then their ears are open where they can't hear. I saw something, and I should have put it up here, but I didn't. I uh, seen a clip that had an ear, a picture of an ear. Then they showed a picture of a woman's womb. Mm -hmm. And they put the two side by side to say that it's ironic that our ear is made to look exactly like a womb. And they put the baby in the ear, wow. show how it comfortably fits mm -hmm. like a womb, mm -hmm. to show that everything that we hear, we can give birth to. Because faith comes by hearing, and right. everything Amen. else comes by hearing. So if you take them things, like you say, oh, no, that don't bother me. I can watch anything I want. I can listen to any music yeah. I want. I don't care about what yeah, the right. other day. No. I just be that's listening right. to it, and it don't bother me. Yeah. But it's giving birth. It's yeah. going inside right. a birth canal. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. after a while, the thing that you listen to and that you watch, I promise you, you're going to act. It. it comes it's away alive. It's going to show up in your life because the enemy does it subtly. You think, oh, no, that means, you know, yeah. I ain't like that. I can watch anything. I'll be just fine. I'll be fine. But you're not. You're not. I see your hand and I'm going to give you a face. But you're not. And as you're allowing this birthing process, you sit down and you relax because every movie, every commercial, every wait on the phone call, everything has music attached to it. Does it not? It does. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. 
Mm. And just like that, just like the money bags and the things that the enemy offers us, we want that quick thing, we want that thing. He, he gets us with the money. He gets us with the clothes and the things we think we want. Mm. Music is so powerful. I, I, I'm like, what are you doing? Come on. Music is so powerful and the words in it. I've heard, I, how many of y'all remember a time when they say, play the song backwards? Yeah. Yes. Song backwards. And when you play the song backwards, you heard chants, you heard actual words, you heard things that were clear forward, that wasn't clear forward, but were very clear backwards. backwards. And I'm listening to it like, this is real. And so for all these artists up and coming, you tell me one artist up and coming. That even young people tell me one artist up and coming that's not dressed in some type of demonic activity, mm. whether it's their clothes, yeah. their costume. Because yeah. you know, I used to say when I go out, we put on what my makeup and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Put on my costume, mm -hmm. and then we go into an environment where it's promiscuous. We look at my son, my son dad, and we're trying to get you know, we're trying to fix. And so you go into an environment laced with uh, uh, spirits. So you put on the costume, you went to the environment, and then you ingest some type of liquid or some type of smoke, and then you put yourself, you're consuming this environment. And so when you listen to the music and these lyrics, I, I, I can name several, but I won't. The spirits on. come out. But there are several upcoming artists right now that if you look at the award show, they're getting worse and worse and worse. There's no type of description they don't care anymore. There are full ceremonial things happening. They introduce horses and blood and they say devil and red eyes and it's just getting worse. And I think some of even the young people look at it and go, that's weird. I like the song. Mm. <laughs> that's true. And that's how they keep them in trance. They keep them in because they don't recognize that they're signing up for something. <coughs> Settle it. The enemy knows. Mm -hmm. He knows. He knows. Power suggestion. He knows. He knows. He knows. So the faith comes by hearing. So I said all that to say, watch what you listen to. Young and old. Watch what you listen to. Amen. Not only watch what you listen to, but watch the words that come out of your own mouth. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Because the words that come out of your own mouth have the power to help you or to hurt That's you. Right. Yes. Amen. All the time. And whatever you say out of your mouth, the Bible says that what you say, you can eat the fruit thereof. Whatever you say, you say to the mountain, you can see the cat. You say, remember the fig tree yeah. that Jesus cursed? He did it on a word. Words are extremely powerful. Yes. So the more time we spend in God's word, the stronger our faith is going to become. Yeah. The less susceptible we are to Satan's attacks. But mm -hmm. God, hear me say this again. There's nothing fantastical. There is no easy step. There is no, I'm going to do all that. I'll just listen to it on my phone. You can't do it that way, people of God. If, if reading is the issue, listen to it there. But then sit and take something away. Don't just say, well, no, I can't, so I won't. No. Find a way to get it in. Mm -hmm. Get it in. Amen. Get it in. Because when you get the word in, you don't even know it's happening. But there are things that you face. It may, be, it may not be the thing in your life. It may not even be your marriage. It may be that you're getting the word in for somebody else. Mm -hmm. You don't even know it in that yeah. moment. But get it in. Don't, don't be a lazy Christian. Yeah. Amen. Don't be a lazy Christian. Amen. Don't wait every Amen. week for me to say something to you. Don't wait every week for Pastor to say something to you. See what God is saying to you. See what 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 he's saying. Because I can promise you everything that he told me about this, I don't have the time to tell you. I try to grab snippets and I have notebooks and I have this and I try to put what I think is relevant in these PowerPoints, but there's no way you could give all of what God gave you in the download. Right. right. But that, that's not available for some Christians. It's not like some Christians have access to God while others don't. That's a lot. Right. It's, it's not true that some Christians hear God. Say, I don't know if I've ever heard God. You heard God. You heard God tell you, don't go down that street. Yeah. Okay. That's right. And, and, and you might thought it was you, but it, the enemy's never going to tell you to do the right thing. That's right. Come on. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's always telling you the wrong thing. He'll never tell you don't lie. That's right. <laughs> He ain't gonna never tell you don't take another drink. He ain't gonna never tell you don't go over there. He ain't gonna never tell you don't wear that. He ain't gonna never tell you that. He ain't gonna tell you, don't you, yeah, you ain't gonna let him know. 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 He ain't gonna tell you. He gonna tell you. He gonna lie to you. 
Bin Laden, mm -hmm. and, and, and while he's lying to you, and, and you're trying to seduce someone else, I don't know where this is coming from. Come on, man, man, man. While you're trying to seduce someone else, there's a spirit assigned to that person you're trying to seduce, and you don't know what you mean. Mm -hmm. There are what they call seducing spirits, and Pastor and I was watching the video the other night. <coughs> there are spirits that come into the earth. They come into the earth legally. They don't, they don't come in without, well, it's by law, in this realm, they have access to come into your life because you open the door and you tell them to. Right. So if you have dabbled in multiple relationships, if you had dabbled in financial strain, if you had dabbled in lying and all the things that came with you into the body of Christ, and you have not renounced those things and asked God to take them away, you're still dragging them around. Amen. Mm -hmm. yep. That's why when I talk to singles, I say for every partner that you get, married folks probably do this too. For every partner that you had before your husband, you need to renounce those people. Because those people left something. No, baby didn't come from it, but they deposited life on the inside of you. Yes. Maybe they were a liar. You find yourself lying a little bit. Oh, Maybe they were financially strained, and now you ain't never got no money. Maybe they were goofy, and you find that you're goofy in the situations you don't want to be. Whatever deposit they made, you need to renounce that. You have to say with your own mouth, and, and, and stop giving God these fake prayers. Lord, just, just take it away. Lord, just bless me. Stop that. Say, I was with this person. Didn't want oh, to be, God. or I wanted Jesus. to be. God, and I gave myself in a way because I didn't know my worth and my God. Talk to him like he would talk to me. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. open up and you talk to him and you tell him the truth, which is what he's waiting for all the time, all this, oh, Lord. Yeah, that's good. It has its place. But honesty is what the Father is after. Yes. Because I tell you, he yes. knows you. Yes. And he knows, he already knows, that's right. And he already knows the things about you that you have yet to discover. Mm -hmm. There are things about you, you're like, I don't even know how to do that. Or you go through something hard, you say, I didn't know I was that strong. But he already knows. Because he put it in you from the beginning. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Let's get back, let's get back in here. Get in the word, and the word of what? Get in you. Get in you. All right, 19. I've got to get to these slides. Well, I've got to make it. Uh, 19 says, And they said unto him, Let me go back up, 18. And one of them, his name was Cleo, but answer said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and had not known the things which are come to pass? It's like, Jesus just died, and we're looking for his body. Where have you been? You're not from around here, are you? You don't know that that's what's just happening. They're talking for Jesus. They don't know that they're talking for Jesus. 19, and he said unto them, what things? There he goes with these questions. And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet. That's right. He was a prophet. They got that right. Mm -hmm. Yes. They said he was mighty indeed and word before God and all the people. They tell him the story. And, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. How oh, imagine Jesus. And we trust that that had been he which should have redeemed Israel. We, we thought he was the Messiah. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Now, before I go to the next part, they had a lot of information about him, right? Mm -hmm. But they missed something that's very important. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about getting in God's face. We have a lot of things about him, right? But there's so much more that he wants to reveal. So don't ready. be satisfied with what you know. Don't ever go to a place where you've arrived. As long as you're breathing on this side of the dirt, you have, will never have arrived. There is so, God is so, so great, so mad, so big, so powerful, so God, that there's no way that you and I can say, I, I don't I understand. I don't no, we, we are students, and we will be students now until we leave. We're always learning and evolving about this great, yes. magnificent, mighty God. So they missed an important part of the conversation. They, they, they missed it. And he says, and uh, and now the chief priest, 21, we trust that had been he that which have redeemed Israel, 22, and yet a certain woman also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. This woman went down there early and came back and said, they didn't find his body and came saying that they had seen a vision of angels and said he was alive. Certain of them were with them at the sepulchre found it. So the woman had said, but him they saw not. Look at what Jesus said. <laughs> oh, fools. <laughs> he starts out like that. And slow of heart. 
to believe all the prophets have spoken. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Ain't, ain't that what was supposed to happen? He's saying yes. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them. Jesus takes them back to the beginning to show them that what happened to him was true and accurate. These are some of the scriptures I imagine that he shared with them. He went through the Bible all the way back to Moses and he gave them scriptures. These are about his glory. Beginning at Moses 28, they drew nigh to the village. This is the part. I'm almost, I'm almost at the end. They drew nigh to the village whither they went, and he made his door with his own father. Jesus acted like it was walking together, and it was like, all right, see you later. He was like, okay, see you. Seems like he was going to go further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And so he went to tarry with them. And it came to pass, he sat at meat with them, and took bread, and blessed it, and break it, and gave it to them. Now, my question right here was, how are you going to go to house? and take their food and drink and serve them. You're supposed to be the guest. You went in your house. Mm -hmm. You went in and took over. Mm. That's what Jesus did. He hit the money down. 31, and their eyes were open. Uh-oh, that's what I was after. 31 says, and their eyes were open. Their eyes were not open until Jesus gave them the body and the blood. Mm -hmm. Did y'all see that? Yes. Their yes. eyes have been closed. They didn't see him. It said that Jesus came blessed it and break it and gave it to him and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Wow. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he saw who they saw him, he was gone. Mm -hmm. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opens up mm. the scripture. And although this is a very familiar passage of scripture, it's as far as some people go. Yeah. And I don't want you to go that far no more. I don't want you to come and get a good word and say, did not our hearts burn? But then you don't have no, you don't have no plan of doing nothing with it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you just wanted to come and get the good word. Mm -hmm. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered and them that were with him, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what things that were done in the way and how it was known of them in breaking of bread. And they spake of Jesus himself. He stood in the midst under them and said, Peace be unto you. I tell you, every time Jesus shows up in your situation, he does speak peace. You don't even know that it's peace being spoken over you. You can be going through the darkest hour, but when he shows up, he brings peace. And I don't mean peace working, it's serene, and you're just, oh, I mean, whatever's going on, in, yeah, your spirit gets peace. And again, I say, you say, I don't know how I got through that. That's because the peace of God is on you. It's not the world's peace. I keep saying that. We think peace is soft music, waterfalls flowing water, everything's no. calm and serene. But that is so the type of Jesus water. we serve. Mm -hmm. He's never done nothing really calm and serene. Everything he did was a little bit chaotic. And that's why our lives look a little crazy. Mm -hmm. Because we, 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 we too quiet sometimes. We look too quiet sometimes. Mm -hmm. But they were terrified and afraid and supposed they had seen the spirit. Look what he has to do. And he said unto them, why are you troubled and why do your thoughts arise in your heart? He said, look at my hands. I imagine when he went to serve them the bread, they saw the hole. Mm -hmm. They had to. Mm -hmm. He said, look at it. He said, handle me, touch me. It's not a spirit, I'm flesh and bones. And when he had spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet and why they believed not to joy. They said, have you any meat? He's still trying to convince them. And so they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and he ate it. I am human. I am a person. Okay? Mm. And he said unto them, these are the words that I spoke unto you while I was with you, that all things must be fulfilled what were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding. He didn't just open their eyes. He opened their understanding. And God, that's important because you can see a thing and not. That's why you find people who are, they, they eyes are open, they so zealous to do something, but they don't have the understanding. Mm -hmm. That's right. He says, all that getting is understanding. That's why you have rogue preachers out here. They got a lot of theological knowledge because mm -hmm. they know the Bible. They can teach it way better than not. And, but, and then they don't see the eyes of understanding, so they go. It's something about when God calls us, we think we're supposed to go do something, and when God calls us, or listen, he tells us to come and sit down in his feet and learn. That's the first time you know that God calls you, is that you become a student, not a doer. You were made a human being, not a human doing. Amen. 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 Uh, 46, and he said, um, 
that Christ would suffer from the dead and be worried for the third day, 47, and repentance of remission of sins he should be preached among everyone. He gave them a commission. He didn't just come, open their eyes, open their understanding, but he told them that you have to go out and preach this. You have to be my witnesses, 48. I send you the promise. Go out. Be a new with power from on high. Don't do anything until the power comes, he says in verse 48. So let me, let me finish this so I can get to my point in 805. Lord, where did the time go, Madison? Where'd he go? Do you have it? She's so cute. <laughs> all right. This is what I want you to remember. These are the three things I want you to take away from this lesson if you can't remember all the other stuff that I've said. Jesus is walking on the road to, with the two men to store two minutes, right? And I want you to see that Jesus didn't come to a prepared situation. It wasn't after they got their life together. It wasn't when they were in the best of their lives. Jesus came where they were. Mm -hmm. And I need you to hear that Jesus will meet you on the road of your life no matter mm -hmm. where you are. That now. is so true. He meets us where we are. He happened to meet them at their point of grief and their point of despair. Yes. They were in a bad place in this mm -hmm. moment. So God Jesus. will meet you in your lowest of your low and your highest Amen. of your high. But he's not a God expecting you to be down there. He will meet you where you are. Mm -hmm. And you may not get down there tomorrow. He's the type of Jesus, let me say this, that will walk every step of you mistaken off. I gave it today, and I hope it tomorrow. But if you don't leave him, you don't forsake him, you Come stay on. with him, this Amen. Jesus that met you where you are is going to open not only your eyes, but mm. your understanding to know who he really is. Yes. Not the church Jesus that I talked about mm. before where you had to have these certain things and look a certain way, but the real him. Yes. Amen. The real him. Yeah. And what else? What else do we find? Jesus shows up any situation you're in. Why do you think that people go through so much? Because when Jesus gets your attention, it's usually doing one of these things or something worse. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. shows up in people's crisis. He shows up when people sick. He shows up when they're divorced. He shows up when something bad is happening because otherwise we, we so, we're so busy. We, just we don't need him. Oh my, I've got a lot to do. i got to be seven. i got a lot to do. i can go to bed. I'm sleepy. i got, I got stuff to do. So we have to show up mm -hmm. in the spaces that we allow, and unfortunately, it's true pain mm -hmm. that he really gets our attention. Mm -hmm. So Jesus will show up on the road with you. The other thing I want you to remember is anytime Jesus shows up, he will reveal who he is. He will yes. reveal his real self. You never have to wonder, is he going to show me who he is? This is what these two men see. They thought they were talking to somebody else, but they were talking to Jesus. Mm -hmm. When he shows up in your life at, at, at the craziest moment, he's going to tell you it's me. I got you. Yes. <coughs> he's going to reveal myself to you. Mm. Lastly, this is most important. Jesus acted as if he was going further down the road. And the only way that their eyes were open and their understanding was enlightened was that they invited him. Yes? Mm -hmm. He only comes in our lives by way of invitation, people of God. That's right. He could have kept going and they could have let him keep going down the road, but they stopped and they invited him. Yes. Well, they That's invited right. him. Mm -hmm. What did they invite him to do? They said, come and dine with us. And he, he came in. Yeah. And because they invited him to come, anytime you invite God into your situation, mm -hmm. he'll come. Yes. He's not going to push his way into your life. He's not that kind of God. I know I just said years ago, Malia, I wish God would just take it from me. Just do it. You know I messed up. And he's like, no, no, no. It's by invitation only. Is this all right? <laughs> right. right. And so where yes. we don't invite God, he doesn't push himself in. If you want your nasty attitude, you can keep it. Um, if you want to be in debt, depressed, suicidal, yeah. he's not going to take it. Amen. He'll let you be that. So when you get serious and you invite him, you say, God, I I've tried it. it. I, I did what the preacher said and the teacher said, and I don't know what to do. When you invite him in your situation, he comes. He comes. He's going to show you it's me. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's me. You have to freely invite him to come. Mm. If you don't freely invite him to come, don't wonder why he's not there. That's right. Mm. Don't wonder that. Don't, don't wonder why you, you're still confused. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. pray together. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for your word. Yes, Lord. I thank Jesus. You Father, I thank you for the simplicity of this passage. Thank you. God, you just show up in our lives. You just show up where we invite you. I pray, God, that someone in this room that is walking with you, 
and they don't quite understand all of what that means. Um, mm. they, they, they just keep walking. I pray that you will reveal yourself even more. I pray, God, that as their eyes become even more open and their ears become open, that they will be careful at what they allow into their eye gate and their ear gate, God. That they would guard their heart with all diligence. They will put a guard over their eyes and over their ears, God, in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would strengthen them for the journey. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, God, that you would increase our faith. Not only just have a man this tonight, God, but that it would take root in us, that it would produce fruit that remains, Father. I pray if there's someone watching online that does not know you in the pardon of their sins. I pray, Father, that you would set forth laborers around them. Yes. Yes. And that their hearts would be free, God, that they would say yes to following you and know that they will come out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. And so I thank you for what you've done in us on tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're here. We love God and we, we love, love people. people.